Welcome to the School of Love, the place where miracles are normal. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the School of Love, the place where we learn practical tools based on scientific research and our own experiences towards improving ourselves, living life to its fullest and contributing to the best of our abilities to the world around us. I'm Dr. Maria Grejdian, and I'm a professor of media studies and anthropology at Hiroshima University. In my free time, I am doing my best to guide you in building up a life of contentment, joy and fulfillment while applying lessons learned in school to overcome the difficulties, challenges and insecurities on, of the real world. In today's video, I talk about the animation movie Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, The Yamadas, released in 1999 by the reputed Japanese animation director Takahata Isao as his fifth animation movie and the fourth to be released with Studio Ghibli. From nowadays perspective, Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, The Yamadas is regarded as, the, as a groundbreaking media product. I start with a brief introduction to Studio Ghibli and subsequently to Takahata Isao, followed by a succinct but profound analysis of Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, The Yamadas. By the end of this video, you will have a rather complete, I would say, understanding of Takahata Isao's animation movie Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas, as well as its significance within the larger framework of Japanese, respectively, global mass media. Takahata Isao's penultimate work produced by Studio Ghibli was the family comedy Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas, or in Japanese Ho Ho Kekyo Tonari no Yamada-kun, released in 1999 which opened the pathway for digital animation mediating serious contents. The underlying lesson in Pompoko the Heisei Tanuki War, despite defeats and painful experiences, it is fundamentally important to keep on living and to allow the others to keep on living as well, finds its continuation in Takahata's penultimate animation release, Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas, which depicts with an unexpectedly compassionate focus on the poetical side of average events in the average lives of um, average citizens, what has been repeatedly described as a typical Japanese family belonging to the middle class. In tones of warm tenderness and sensible humor, Takahata radically changes the graphic illustration, leaving the traditional design and symbolically, magistrally, returns to a style of the illusory, unprocessed visual representation. Dots and lines on paper metamorphose from raw sketches into paintings carrying deep, impactful significance. The family saga depicted in Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, is an ode to the average life of quotidian social actors and their apparently insignificant events, displayed by Takahata with honesty and tenderness. Fully computer generated and drawn in manga style or Japanese comics, Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, opens up far-reaching pathways for future animation artists and mediates simultaneously Takata's most important belief, to which he adhered with unbreakable decisiveness in all his animation productions. Live wholeheartedly, as each ending is the chance of a new beginning within the circle of human existence. The importance of family and of the immediate community has been repeatedly highlighted in sociological and anthropological works, which refer to pre-modern lifestyles as orientation guideposts for the cold late modernity. However, in dealing with such sensitive topics, the animation works released by Studio Ghibli would depict the reality of life as an ongoing process of learning, rather than delving into nostalgic reproductions of a past which as such never existed. In this video, I underline these intrinsic dynamics between the confrontation of the tangible immediacy of existence with the human need for projection in the future, while nurturing memories of the past, invented or not. It is precisely this quest for an immersion into the deep layers of reality beyond what we perceive with the five regular senses that turn specific works released by Studio Ghibli into masterworks of creative energy and lessons in empathy in a world gradually distancing itself from compassion and authentic vulnerability. 
The depiction of family in early works, such as My Neighbor Totoro and Grave of the Fireflies, both released in 1988 and directed by Miyazaki Hayao, respectively Takahata Isao, are characterized either by a strong feeling of warmth and comprehension while describing childhood's um, anxieties and necessary rites of passage, or are brutally straightforward in the display of war as an unconditionally destructive force of everything which encompasses the common world, as Hannah Haren famously put it decades ago. Rumors of a definitive split between Takahata and Miyazaki emerged at the beginning of the 2000s, but Spirited Away is like Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, an epos of learning about oneself and discovering the others as others in the process and of living life as it comes. The implosion of family. Around the turn of the millennium, the Japanese society showed disturbing signs of suffering from agonizing ruptures within the structure of the nuclear family and a deep lack of affection and empathy between members belonging to the same household is exposed without false hopes, while being represented as the ground for the individuals to recognize and explore their own innate abilities to overcome the loneliness, passive aggressiveness, or open aggressiveness, and silence around them. After Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas, the analysis of the family and of family ties appears in later animation works such as Sen uh, and Chihiro's Sudden Disappearance, or as it is better known, Spirited Away from 2001 and directed by Miyazaki Hayao. Both Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas and Spirited Away reveal a rather disenchanted vision of family in late modern Japan, with increasingly disoriented parents and entitled children, however, artistically treated with warm humor or with incomprehensibly la lazy consumerist, selfish parents, and with children gradually forced to take over the functions and responsibilities of their own parents. Eventually, the international acknowledged manifesto of childhood lost and refound and of the unabashed observation that family is in crisis, Spirited Away depicts without any restraints the dissolution of the traditional Japanese family or family ideal as implemented by major technocrats and heavily promoted by the post-war Japanese consumption society. Once again, we are confronted with the distressing truth that childhood is more often than not experienced as merely the product of a merchandised interaction between what uh, Julia Kristeva has called in 1974 the imaginary chaos and the symbolical order preparing the self for the confrontation with the real. Children are not human beings, but numbers and products, precious assets to be taken care of in the capitalist logic of the neo-Marxist post-Adonist order of things, with education, holidays, entertainment and free time strictly controlled and measured by ideologies of structural formations. Spirited Away rejects the conformist vision of political economic limitation of the infantile imagination via preconceived educational models and offers credible lessons in hard work and humility as necessary rites of passage towards the creation and crystallization of a strong sense of self and leads naturally to a deep and organic acceptance of the others in their radical alterity. And now, first things first, that is to disclaimers. The first disclaimer serves to strongly emphasize the fact that this YouTube channel, The School of Love, is not part of my educational and research activities at Hiroshima University. It is nonetheless part of my privilege, joy and sense of duty to propagate and implement knowledge, information as well as motivation and inspiration outside the limited framework of academic endeavors. Together we can build up a better tomorrow for as many of us as possible. The second disclaimer relates to the fact that I am a trained musician and musicologist, not a psychologist, therapist or counselor. The ideas I am sharing in my videos reflect my deep going preoccupation with life, my own life and other people's lives and express the results of my experiences, research and for better or for worse, my failures, as well as my recovering from those failures, recovery which is still ongoing. The ideas expressed in the videos on this channel named The School of Love cannot and may not and must not replace the consultation with specialists in whichever areas of your life you might have questions or you might struggle with. 
if you are new to the channel at this moment i would like to ask you to please consider subscribing sharing liking commenting thank you very very much this helps us not only with that mysterious algorithm which seems to dominate the youtube galaxy but also with contributing to the expansion of the community of humans doing their best to impact positively the world and those around them by discovering their authentic selves and living life wholeheartedly. Thanks again. Within the international animation landscape, Studio Ghibli has become throughout the past almost four decades, a symbolic icon of successful Japanese animation which emerges as a constructive combination of aesthetic ideological visions and consumption-oriented compromises. As the epitome of an impactful cultural enterprise dealing with the production of cultural assets, namely animation works, sometimes also known as anime, the Japanese version of cartoons, Studio Ghibli's productions stand out due to their strong messages embedded in the medium of visual imagery, both aesthetically reflecting the reality and ideologically tackling urgent issues such as environmental pollution, social discrimination, the process of growing up, historical responsibility, the meaning and value of life, or love as a complex emotional paradigm. Since its foundation in 1985, with a stable location in Higashi Kogane in Western Tokyo, Studio Ghibli has turned over the decades into a symbolic institution of the Japanese entertainment industry. The name mostly associated with Studio Ghibli is Miyazaki Hayao, born in 1942, who has collected the most recognition, but he is in fact solely a member of what might be called the Ghibli Quartet, consisting of Miyazaki Hayao, Takahata Isao, Suzuki Toshio, and Hisaishi Jo. The founding quartet included Takahata Isao, Miyazaki Hayao, Suzuki Toshio, and Tokuma Yasuyoshi, with the last two serving as producer and manager, respectively. The composer Hisaishi Jo came later to join the Ghibli Enterprise after he was discovered by Takahata and Miyazaki when he presented the music proposal for the first official animation movie released by the newly founded Studio Ghibli in 1986, Laputa the Castle in the Sky. Nowadays, one can talk of the Studio Ghibli in terms of an expanding Ghibli corporation, with the Ghibli Museum founded in 2001 and located in Mitaka, Tokyo, which was projected and built under the supervision of Miyazaki Goro, Miyazaki Hayao's eldest son. A real-life replica of Satsuki and Mei's house from the animation movie My Neighbor Totoro, released in 1988, situated on the Expo 2005 site in Nagakute, Aichi Prefecture, uh, which was designed by Miyazaki Goro as well, and a long-expected Ghibli theme park in Aichi Prefecture opened in November 2022. Ghibli, written in fact G-I-B-L-I, means in Italian hot desert wind and was supposed to have the effect of a fresh wind reinvigorating the framework of Japanese animation. Studio Ghibli was grounded, as I said, in the year 1985, mainly by uh, the animation directors Takahata Isao and Miyazaki Hayao. Both grounders had already gathered experience in the field of animation and of the Japanese animation industry, which they subsequently employed in developing their own animation production company. Together with the so-called Takahata-Miyazaki combination, two more persons have been accompanying the Ghibli enterprise since its beginning and have been contributing to its astonishing success. The producer Suzuki Toshio and the composer Hisaishi Jo. <music> While within this quartet, Miyazaki Hayao has been the one who has gotten most of, if not all, laurels throughout the years, the real engine inside Studio Ghibli and the one who had initially discovered Miyazaki, who had influenced him decisively, both as an artist and as a human being, and who eventually taught him the value and importance of social responsibility, was, by all means, admittedly, Takahata Isao. A way more profound life experience, inner authority, insight into the human experience, 
diverse relationships, tireless perseverance, unbreakable assertiveness, goal-oriented persistence, and a very particular type of genius which enabled him to recognize the genius in others are elements which imposed Takahata Isao not only as the older colleague and main catalyst of Miyazaki Hayao, as well as the co-founder of the Ghibli Enterprise, but also as the one who, far more than Miyazaki, has been actively witnessing the history of modern animation and cartoons and tremendously impacted it, both aesthetically and ideologically, while profoundly helped shape it through a huge corpus of animated works. It is true, though, that Takahata Isao is virtually unknown outside of animation circles. Nevertheless, without him and his immense contribution, Studio Ghibli would not be what it is today, and possibly the worldwide animation phenomenon as such. Takahata Isao's films were mostly no particular successes at the box office, but nonetheless discrete artistic masterworks and milestones within the genre of animation. Ideologically, Takahata Isao takes his distance from his younger colleague and friend Miyazaki Hayao. More than Miyazaki, Takahata has grasped very clearly on in his career the fact that audiences in present times do not need epic stories about heroes, dictators, and the holy new world after their demise, as colorfully represented in The Prince of Sun, Horus' Great Adventure from 1968 in an era full of evidences that the historical situation gets much worse after the demise of that very dictator. Rather, late modern cinema goers are looking for models of individual responsibility which generates social cohesion, the second important thematic conglomerate in the same The Prince of Sun, Horus' Great Adventure from 1968. And Takata's works talk about it, about this idea of individual responsibility which generates social cohesion. In a different manner than Miyazaki's characters, mostly epic archetypical shoujo heroines on the front line who are fighting for universal values, Takahata's characters are either orphans or desperate children from The Prince of Sun, Horus' Great Adventure until The Grave of the Fireflies from 1988, or quotidian citizens struggling to survive and to find their own ways through life, from memories like raindrops from 1991 until My Neighbors the Yamadas from 1999. A notable exception is in Takahata's vision of social critique by means of artistic expression is his last film, The Tale of Princess Kaguya from 2013, in which an extraordinary destiny is painted with clarity and compassion, while simultaneously transcending historical acuity into present-day uncertainties. Anchored in a clearly defined cultural reality, Takahata's characters are primarily concerned with individual survival in terms of risking one's own self as a very palpable entity. Humanity as an abstract concept is mostly presented as a diluted form of forgotten humanism carried by distant, cool decision makers who, in their quest for absolute and übermensch like ideals, ruin the lives of plain humans. In Takahata's conceptualization of the world, there are no fabulous victories or defeats, but solely human destinies, which in their very average substance, sometimes referred to by contemporary sociologists as wasted lives, in the words of Zygmunt Ma Bauman, cannot turn into the main focus of social analysts. <laughs> crucial to learn to move with the flow of times and to experience life as an eternal celebration despite or precisely due to its difficulties and disappointments. The animation movie Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, or in Japanese Ho Ho Kekyo Tonari no Yamada Kun, released in 1999, talks in a warm-hearted, gentle and simultaneously serious manner of the importance of family as a balanced set of aspirations and concerns on the one hand and fulfillments and pleasures on the other hand. It is a cheerful family comedy displayed like a video comic trip, arguably in itself quite unusual, compared to other animation works released by Studio Ghibli, which are drawn in classical animation style. It was the first fully digital movie of the Studio Ghibli. Despite positive reviews, Ho Ho Kikyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, was a huge flop at the box office, both domestic and international, and was followed by a long break in Takahata's creative activity until 2013, when his magnum opus, 
the tale of Princess Kaguya was released. The unexpected surprise delivered by Ho Ho Kikyu, my neighbors, the Yamadas, does not arise so much from the topic it chooses to address, but rather from the unusual characters and design style, as well as through the somewhat unorthodox treatment of the subject, with its numerous ironic and self-ironic elements and startling twists. At the crossroads of the millennia, audiences seem to seek for affirmative and straightforward works of art, which could be taken as mental emotional signposts and be less impressed by philosophical or critical inputs in troubled times lacking ideological and aesthetic orientation. The plot of Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, is based on the manga work of Ishii Hisaichi from the 1980s. It describes the everyday life of a typical or not, depending on the point of view, Japanese family with their quotidian endeavors. Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, belongs to the comedy as a genre, while unconditionally displaying an ideological background of honesty and warm humanism, which can be recognized in all animation works directed by Takahata Isao. The director does not intend in the least to make fun of the painful, embarrassing, terrible experiences of the members of the Yamada family or to put them in a ridiculous light. Rather, the intention is to convey a realist image of Japanese everyday life by means of digital animation, as much as this was possible at that very historical moment. Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas, was produced as a Studio Ghibli animation work after Princess Mononoke. In this work, namely Princess Mononoke, there is the very seriously meant statement live. To the question how to do it best, the characters in the animation film Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, obviously react with a funny, lovely verdict, however you might like it. In doing so, Takahata clearly shows that it is indeed possible to openly address the problems plaguing the, the environment and the family, as well as the connections between them, to reflect upon those issues and to express various opinions without demonizing the perpetrators, as in the animation movie The Prince of Sun, Horus Great Adventure from 1968, or to return to the fields and the physical work implied by living in the countryside, as in the animation movie Memories Like Grand Robes from 1991. The Yamada family has five members. Takashi is an average employee in an anonymous company. Matsuko is an ordinary, not exceptionally hardworking housewife. Yamano Shige, Matsuko's mother, is a retired old lady as to be found everywhere in Japan, obtrusive, annoying, know it all, and yet somehow familiar with her fascination for larvae instead of the flowers they, that they are eating away at. Noboru, the elder son, is a student at a minor university and does not understand the meaning of continuous goal-oriented study. Nonoko, the younger daughter, embodies the archetype of the spoiled, cynical girl. Ho Ho Kekyo, my neighbors, the Yamadas, is peppered with mythological allusions, visible, for instance, in the birth circumstances of the two children of the Yamada family, Noboru and Nonoko, which are traced back to two of the most famous popular legends or folk tales. The first one about Momotaro, or the peach boy, a baby boy who had been found in a peach floating down a river by an elderly childless couple who then decided to adopt him and years later, as the boy turns into a grown-up man, he trains to be a warrior who saves the world from the oppression of demons and Kaguya Hime. The baby girl found by an elderly childless bamboo cutter in the stem of a bamboo tree in a bamboo forest who takes her home and decides, together with his wife, to raise her. Later on, she turns out to be a princess from the moon, where she is also supposed to return to one day. Cultural hints are taken into account as well. For instance, when the newly wed Takashi and Matsuko ride on a huge wave, unbashedly reminding of Hokusai's world-renowned woodblock print, but they are counterbalanced by the popular song Naruyoni Na, or translated into English, what will be, will be, the Japanese version of Doris Day Unforgettable Evergreen Kesera Sera. In the midst of a fight, during which Shige makes fun of Takashi's advancing boldness, Takashi points out Shige's missing teeth, only for both of them subsequently to accuse Matsuko of her overweight when she tries to bring them to stop fighting. 
eventually Nonoko complains that she cannot enjoy her favorite television show because of their nonsensical verbal duels and Noboru concludes snappily on the secret recipe to the harmony and balance within the Yamada family. The reason why Yamada family can stay afloat no matter what is that all three grown-ups are nuts and when or if one of them would become normal the sense of balance would be broken. Immediately afterwards, the Yamada family levitates in the air, carrying colorful umbrellas a la Mary Poppins, while day turns into night and huge fireworks appear out of nowhere. They sing wholeheartedly. Que sera sera, shot a commemorative Pulikula family picture, and the father may, for once, exceptionally or habitually, it is not said or even suggested, decide what to enjoy for dinner. Accompanied by the deep sounding words of Busson's poetry, the soft movement of the sea waves in spring the whole day, the five members of this unusual or usually family, together with their dog, move towards distant horizons in the dim melancholic light of the sunset. Human happiness, its meaning and its methods, cannot be found as such neither in the Japanese nor in the Western way of seeing life or the world. Rather, it depends on the individual. The difference emerges from the two underlying existential paradigms, the Western one, which rests on the vision of life and of the world as something unchangeably predetermined. Sera is the future form of the verb essere, or to be in Italian, and the Japanese one, based on life and world philosophy, which promotes a changeable, modifiable model of existence, naru, which means to become. Despite adversities in life, and in the world, it is still possible to move forward when one believes in oneself and puts in the effort. In case it does not work out, there is always a second chance, a third chance, and so on, in the circle of life and world vision derived from Shinto and Buddhist faith, in contrast to the irreversible limitation of the Judeo-Christian tradition. The fundamental message in Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, materializes from its vignette. One lives an uneventful life, has to deal with ironic, disrespectful attitude of the people around oneself and of one's own children, with the neglectful, loveless gestures of one's own partner, with indifferent co-workers and seniors. But there is always space for dreaming of an heroic existence in which one can save at least one's own family from solos so commonly encountered in today's societies. This is illustrated in the scene in which, following the crushing defeat in the altercation with a three-member motorcycle gang, Takashi metamorphoses into a superman-like man and rescues his family from the clutches of a dangerous Yakuza clan. This is a highly combative scene, which turns out to be the product of his imagination while he sits on a swing in a desolated park, holding in his hand a protective helmet so ubiquitous in Japan with its national safety first strategy, stifling any gestures of risk or adventure. Thick, heavy, bitter tears roll down his cheeks. This is no joke, but the reality, in Takata's own words. One works, one plans, one does his best, and still everything goes wrong. The only way out is to pull oneself once again together and to master the situation to the best of one's abilities, as detailed in another classic scene, in which, during a friend's wedding, Takashi finds in his pocket, instead of the laboriously prepared speech, a shopping list, so that he has to improvise spontaneously. Apart from the irresistible playfulness of the scene, there are deep, meaningful lessons for young people in Takashi's effort to do his best, both in post-recession Japan and elsewhere, in oversaturated, stagnating societies where fresh, dynamic lifestyles are slowly taking over and replacing the old ways of living, loving and working. Despite its financial failure at the box office, Japanese and worldwide, this bright, cheerful family comedy narrates of family values and intergenerational interdependence, of social conformism and personal fulfillment, of quotidian love in the lives of average citizens and of individual solutions to general constraints and obligations. Regardless of the social political environment, life goes on inside of the household with its dreams, hopes, desires, these illusionments, joys and expectations. 
finding one's own true self or living to be one's own true self does not necessarily mean the epic quest for adventures and world rescuing events, but in the case of the Yamada family, the undisturbed continuation of everyday life, as overwhelming or boring as it might be at times. There are several scenes which seem to hold this very everyday life like pictures in a photo album and to perpetuate it likewise. First of all, there is the unforgettable scene called A Dangerous Domestic Crisis, in which Nonoko gets lost during a shopping tour of the Yamada family in a department store. Too exhausted to continue their search for the lost daughter, the remaining members of the family decide to return home, where after a while they receive a call from an unknown person who had found Nonoko and had brought her home from the shopping mall together with her own son. With the tension having lifted, one can hear from outside of Yamada family's house happy laughter and cheerful voices. Basho's lyrical words, cheerful laughter, dissolves the silence of the, the autumn evening, comfort to the entire situation a slightly surreal atmosphere. Even the Yamada marriage seems to be particular in its own ways. In two further scenes, named Married Life, Yamada Style, and um, it is easier to get old and wise. The battle for the television remote controller between husband and wife is keenly depicted. While Mr. Yamada wants to watch a soccer game, Mrs. Yamada wants to watch her favorite television drama show. They switch back and forth and Nonoko's comment, in the end nobody can watch television anymore, is a clear evaluation of nasty, uncomfortable circumstances, while her grandmother's Shige reply, this is funnier by far, finds its explanation in the next sequence, which surprises the two spouses entangled in a short moment of affection, dancing tango. Despite numerous gestures of petty competition and disagreements, Takashi and Matsuko stay connected through some sort of invisible inner bond, dysfunctional, one might argue, but still somehow weirdly familiar from the viewer's own experiences outside of the ideal area of the animation movie. On the other hand, in the second scene, Noboru cannot overcome his sleepiness and lack of interest in studying. He tries his best, but he is obviously not interested in learning and consequently fails his exams. During the subsequent family gathering, the father suggests hiring a private teacher for 30,000 yen an hour and Shige offers herself as the private teacher for only 20,000 yen an hour, to which Noboru mentions he would gladly learn by himself for only 10,000 yen an hour. Basho's sensible words, the moon in summer, transcient dreams of beautiful octopus catcher, remind of the transcience of life, which neither knowledge nor money can transcend. In some other domestic scenes, like the housekeeping genius, uh, the famous combination, the morning of the ginger, or arty short, life is long, it becomes possible to understand the background of this peculiar household, at the same time familiar and alienating. In a first step, Matsuko's laziness is openly displayed, who either forgets to dry the laundry, only to wonder hours later how she could have managed so much that the laundry itself has disappeared from the clothesline. On a different occasion, she employs common mean tricks to avoid her husband's guests by pretending to be in the middle of a spring cleanup instead of just sorting up the prevailing mess in the house. Mr. Yamada's dismay and frustration, who constantly tries to fit in the role of the self-conscious head of the family, deliver a specific ironic serenity to this little interlude, even if it questions simultaneously the brutal discordance between facts and appearances in many parts of the Japanese society, both public and private. In a second step, the oftentimes strangely underestimated generation gap is depicted in the relationship between Matsuko and her mother, Shige. Matsuko cannot get her mother to cook dinner, or at least to order it. After several unsuccessful attempts, Shige gives up and leaves a huge chaos in the kitchen. On a similar note, Matsuko's culinary art is not stellar either. Her monotonous meals prepared with the same ingredients lead, apparently, to forgetfulness and boredom, with the somehow predictable outcome that no one can properly carry out their daily tasks anymore. The resulting confusion talks about the necessity of manifold, diverse dishes within a healthy framework of quotidian activities with a great variety of contents. 
Repeatedly, Basho is quoted in the cicadas chirping, the image of death does not creep in. Which brings into the foreground Takata's credo of life as the most important asset one possesses and could ever possess. While death might come out as the end goal of life, up to the point when death shows up, one must live life to its fullest and enjoy the events, experiences, surprises of life wholeheartedly. Two particular scenes are dedicated to Grandmother Shige, My Way and The Hero of Justice. Interestingly, throughout Hoho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, Shige is portrayed neither under the sign of blind respect nor with sarcastic sneakiness. Rather, she appears as the prototype of millions of Japanese senior citizens who, upon exiting the workforce market and or entering the late phase of their lives, find themselves placed on the outskirts of a society which prefers the young, strong, beautiful people, focused on consumption, excess, intensity. Shige has her own set of rules, which she takes into account within her daily life. She lays ads for the local croque tournament over the posters for the election campaign with its political candidates. She gets annoyed with another retired person who is cleaning her part of the public park. She scolds her daughter Matsuko when she tries to fool around the complicated garbage collection system by disposing the domestic trash at various convenience stores. She feels sorry for a guardrail which had been ruined in an accident caused by a motorcycle gang instead of feeling sorry for those youngsters themselves who had died in the accident. On the other hand, she changes the rules whenever she feels appropriate, like when she is caught offside. One such moment is, for instance, when she rewards two boys with two balls which had fallen in her garden instead of one, but subsequently she is not able anymore to give the second ball to the boys who had lost it indeed. Hastily, she employs a nonsensical lie and sends the boys away, despite having lectured Nonoko only minutes ago on the necessity to always say the truth and to stay behind one's true intentions and gestures. Some scenes in Ho Ho Kekyo My Neighbors, the Yamadas, are deeply touching in their ironic helplessness. Though scenes which try, unconvincingly, to present Takashi as the head of the family and the model of masculinity leading by example. In some memorable sequences, like male bonding, translated literally as a conversation between parents and children, father as a role model, translated literally like the back of my old man, and the chronicles of the Yamada family, Noboru undermines in full peace of mind his father's efforts to impress his son as a father and as a man. The father plays more poorly catch ball than his son and breaks the window of the neighbor's house with the ball. The father cannot explain credibly to his son the meaning of life. The father is less of an expert when dealing with alcoholic beverages than his son. The father cannot convince the family to take a commemorative picture together when the first snow of the year has fallen. The father has to experience alone his own joys in life. The father receives hardly anything to eat when he comes home from work, exhausted, and despite earning money for the entire family. Takashi's loneliness is summed up in two short poetical fragments by Santoka, respectively Basho, the back of a lonely figure in the light autumn rain, and Turn to me, I am lonely in the autumn dusk as well. Interestingly, in the depiction of Takashi's lonely life within his family and at work, there seems to be no intention of disclosing, by means of animation, the split or dissolution of the Japanese family in late modernity or the half-mythical isolation of the individual within an alienating system. Rather, family is displayed as a manifold dynamic conglomerate with both positive and negative dimensions, as well as sustainable methods to move through life. This view of things is supported by a further scene, or titled section manager, in which Takashi oversleeps on the morning when he is supposed to leave for a business trip and consequently intends to call in sick and stay home, but eventually decides to go to work and fulfill his obligation. His commute to work in overcrowded trains in the midst of faceless humans finds its semantic counterpart in the nostalgia-filled images of little plants on the garbage heaps and of the birds on the electric wires. Nature fills in where humans must give in 
to their own fallibility and delivers in the process grace and beauty to life, to the world and to the efforts of the humans. There are also moments though in which Takashi's dignity is restored. An important step in this direction is his spontaneously improvised speech at the wedding caused by his wife having handed him over her own shopping list instead of the piece of paper with his painstakingly prepared speech. A further important step is the electrifying sequence, the chronicles of the Yamada family too, in which Takashi calls home from the train station during a heavy rainfall and asks that someone comes pick him up with an umbrella. Nobody wants to, but Matsuko advises him to go buy an umbrella from the supermarket and if he goes to the supermarket anyway, should also buy some pork. Takashi hangs up angry, but he buys, after a long hesitation, the requested pork at the supermarket. On his way back home, he meets his wife and their children, who bring him an umbrella. The four of them return home in quiet reconciliation. Busan's poetical accept. In the spring rain, they walk away while telling stories, carrying coats and umbrellas, confers the scene lyrical universalism and underscores once again the diversity of the human life and therefore of human togetherness. Hoho ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, is without a doubt an authentic masterwork which depicts life, the human being and the world in pastel colors and light-hearted emotions. Such a depiction is a repetition, a summary and a sensible emphasis of the issues represented so far in Takata Isao's animation works. That is, an alternative type of enlightenment on the historical stage, which celebrates the epic of life as an unique, unrepeatable event in itself. This showcases deep roots in the universe of Japanese animation. The basic idea in many animation productions in Japan, with otherwise very different themes, is the request to live and keep on living as long and as wholeheartedly as possible. The value of life seems to be recognized at last. It emerges from a type of enlightenment with warm humanism at its very core, which celebrates the human being with its uniqueness and unrepeatability, with its failures and setbacks, but also with its delights, hopes and dreams. The problematic of banishing the animal-like dimensions from within the human being by means of pure reason is transcended and harmonized through the focus on the joy of life, it is no longer a battle, but a process of constructive cooperation. On this foundation, Takahata Isao creates his Yamada family and sends it into the wide world with its momentary pleasures and frustrations, worries and aspirations, contradictions and nonsensical inquiries mediated by Japanese animation art. Ho Ho Kikyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas, was like the Prince of Sun, Ho's Great Adventure, more than three decades ago, a crushing financial flop. Among the reasons why this exceptional masterwork ended up in the unhappy line of disappointing releases, an important one is the plot, as many viewers saw themselves confronted with their own marital misery and lack of social acknowledgement. A further contributor to Ho Ho Ke Kyo, My Neighbors the Yamada's failure, was the unusual drawing style and the innovative approach towards the topic itself, with its numerous ironic and self-ironic constructions, as well as shocking the new among. Takahata's penultimate animation release clashed against the expectations of audiences who, too exhausted by their own loss of ideologic aesthetic orientation, were desperately looking for validating or at least consolidating artifacts which could serve as guidelines or guideposts, rather than philosophical or critical works of art meant to challenge them intellectually. The animation style was a further fundamental reason leading up to the negative reception of Ho Ho Ke Kyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas. Unlike in the vast majority of animation works released in Japan or elsewhere, and even by Studio Ghibli standards, the characters are hardly sketched with open contours and in pastel colors on barely visible backgrounds. The impression of a specific lack of finality in design dissolves throughout the movie, when the care for seemingly insignificant details turns obvious, as well as the intrinsically complex structure of the narrative line. It takes insightful compassion to gradually discover the red threads connecting this animation work to previous ones, and neither the audiences nor the critics had obviously the necessary insight or the patience.
As in every work by Takahata, this animation movie possesses a certain nostalgia and a particular human sensitivity beyond the precise art of representation. During the 144 minutes, with warm humor and empathetic irony, the viewer accompanies the Yamada family during various aspects of its everyday life, from domestic disagreements to work-related issues in their narrative specificity. The audience begins soon either to identify with the apparently crazy but in fact amazingly universal family, or at least to love and admire them in their nature, affection and down to earth approach to everything. At the end of a tumultuous decade, the profound disenchantment of the lost 1990s finds an inverse expression in Hoho Kekyo My Neighbors the Yamadas. Displayed in an unconventional, innovative drawing style and composed of several episodes describing the quotidian life of an average Japanese family in a humorous tone, it creates the emotional space for the audiences to increasingly identify with the Yamada members and their everyday struggles, dreams, fears, misunderstandings and small victories. As often with animation works directed by Takahata, Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors the Yamadas, is a discreet masterpiece and a huge flop at the box office, remaining nonetheless a powerful reminder that true happiness resides in the small things occurring on an everyday basis and which we tend to pass by without taking notice of them. The green grass on the side of the pedestrian way, the smiling good morning of an anonymous passerby, the ephemeral rainbow after the rain, the butterflies playing at the beginning of the summer, the twinkling stars in the night sky, the soft, warm humanism which supports the directing act of this unobtrusive family comedy is the foundation of that mental state in which we learn to accept those around us in their fundamental alterity as Emmanuel Levinas famously put it decades ago and to love them despite or precisely due to their flaws and inconsistencies. Takata Isao's penultimate animation movie speaks about life in terms of a cheerful endeavor. One lives only once. Therefore, one should live life to its fullest, courageously facing both challenges and setbacks. Takata's previous efforts to present life as a beautiful, joyful adventure in his artistic works develop in Ho Ho Kekyo, My Neighbors, the Yamadas, into an almost intrusive request addressing the humans to take back their own power, to embrace life and other humans in their unconditional uniqueness, and to start finding common solutions for a world open to all possibilities. The deeply rooted humanism of such a message is still scarcely understood more than two decades after the animation movie has been released or mostly misunderstood. That would be from me for today. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining me. And I'm looking forward to welcoming you very soon again. Love and peace to you all.